Hey everyone, Sean Frangella here for motiontutorials.net with a new Cinema 4D tutorial about how to animate type in letter by letter using MoGraph effectors. So if you started this video and were looking at that intro and thinking, man, I can't wait for this thing to get over and see what this video is actually gonna be about. Well, this one is all about how to create the type in that intro. So I've gotten a couple requests and questions about how I made that intro and I wanted to get into specifically in this video, how I did the type animation and kind of point to different areas of how to do the full thing. So here we have the Cinema 4D file where there's a camera kind of rotating around and some 3D text popping in and flying in letter by letter. And what I'm doing is taking that Cinema 4D file and bringing that into After Effects to do the post-production glows and background colors. So in this video, I wanna focus on the effectors. If you need to get off the ground with how to create the type and texture the caps, I went over that in a different video. So check that one out first if you wanna get up to speed on that and get things in place to where we're talking about the effectors. And in this one, I'm using Cinema 4D R17, which is the full studio version. So if you are by chance using Cinema 4D Lite in After Effects, it's a slightly different process, but good news, I put together a different video of how to go about that process of creating a similar 3D text animation all using the light version inside of After Effects. So now that I've mentioned multiple different videos to go watch instead of this one, if you're still watching, let's get started. So what I have here is this 3D text and I'm just gonna delete everything in my scene except my text in that camera that's moving around. So all I got going is this camera movement and the text isn't doing anything. Now, what these objects are is Mo text. if I were to go to MoGraph Motex, and these are great because you can drop effectors onto lines, words, or letters over here and animate those separately. So the way we want to do that is select one of these Motex options. I'm going to go to MoGraph Effector and in front of that first one, I'm going to get a plane effector. And you can see it just kind of pops up vertically. That's not really what we're looking for. And if I go to that motion word, it's going to automatically drop that onto my letters. Now, if I didn't have that selected or if I did that on accident without it selected, what I could do is go to MoGraph Effector Plane and whoops, I forgot to do it, but I can go to that Mo text and just pick wherever I want it and just drop it in and that same thing is gonna happen. So what this is doing and how most effectors work is there's kind of a couple basic things going on here. There's the effector, which is just a strength, positive and negative. Then there's our parameter. So what are we affecting? And in this case, we're just affecting position Y, that's our default. So if I put that at zero and say, maybe push Z back, they're all gonna go back in Z. If I did scale, I could pop on uniform scale and they would then scale separately. And if I did rotation, I could rotate the individual letters onto the different axes. So you can already kind of see how this is coming together. Now, if we wanted to animate these all at once, we could go to Effector and just animate that strength from 100 down to zero, and they would animate into place. What's cool about this is you could also overshoot it by going negatives. So even if you don't have the parameters set to it coming past the camera, you could go negative and it kind of back and go past, and then you could animate the strength back down. But one other thing I like to do with these is animate the fall off. And that's how we can animate it left to right or right to left or whatever. So how we can do this is for this fall off shape, instead of infinite, I'm gonna go to sphere. This is the one I like to work with. And that's gonna pop open all these new settings. We can see we have this sphere. If we move that left to right, you can see we don't even need to add keyframes for the strength at all. We can do it all in the fall off. So I can move our fall off. I could increase the scale and I could also animate the scale. So if we wanted them all to animate from the center, we could just animate that scale going from something like a thousand down to zero and they're all gonna collapse in. We also could scale up the size in XYZ. So if we wanted them all to just kind of animate, we could do that. So if I jump back into the finish file as an example, we can take a look at what's going on and then work it out. So what's happening is they're all rotating in and scaling and moving closer to the camera. And then the bottom row is doing something similar, but rotating the opposite direction. And you can see that there's this giant 
yellow and red sphere representing that fall off and that's just animating in. So what we can do back in our new project file is I'm gonna jump out of my camera view so we can see our whole scene. And I'm just gonna increase the scale of that fall off so it's hitting everything. And then I'm gonna make my size a lot bigger on X, Y, and Z. So I'll put it at like 300 by 300 by 300. Then what I can do is animate just that fall off moving into place. And you can see it's pushing our text back. Now, if we wanna use it to bring everything in on our fall off on the effector, we can invert that. And then now if we're away and bring the text in, you can see it'll animate in based on whatever we have our parameters set at. So what's cool about this is now all I need to do is animate this whole effector on X. So you can see if I move it under coordinates for position, it's moving X. So I could just animate the position way off to the left, go ahead in time and bring it into where it's fully encompassing the letters, update that keyframe, and now you can see it's gonna animate in. And what's cool about working with effectors in this way is that we only need to worry about that one set of keyframes and we can still go back in and adjust our effector parameters to really change the animation. So I can push them even further back. I could take scale down further and even put it at like negative one. So they're gonna go from not existing at all to existing. You could even push the rotation a bit and and we'll tweak it as we want to. So now it will animate into place. And if we need it to take longer, we can just stretch out these keyframes. So we can shorten our little timeline down here and just play this and take a look. And there's our animation. And then if we want to adjust it, we can go to our effector and maybe have them coming in from the left a little or rotating even more. And now we'll get even more rotation, maybe zero out these couple. And then you can see that it's really changing that animation and how it comes in. And we only got to worry about that one set of keyframes. Now that's just one effector. If we wanted to really push this, we could add more and we can even audition them on and off. So if we went to MoGraph effector random with that selected, you can see it looks pretty similar, but rather than changing the position or rotation, if I check on rotation evenly, it's gonna do it randomly on the letter. So we can see that the M and the O right there are rotating on the same axis, but in different directions. And with this one under effector, we get this random seed. So if we wanted to have the same strength, but randomize how it's falling on the letters, we can just adjust that. And we could do the same thing with that fall off. We could get a sphere and animate it in and out. And what's cool about these effectors is if we look at our text, it applies them sequentially and we could even turn them on and off on our mo text you kind of audition different looks of this and again what's cool about working this way is it's very modular and we can very easily make copies of this and tweak this so if i like this animation that i got going on with that plane effector for the top text and i want to use something similar for this bottom row but adjust it a little I could duplicate that whole plane effector, then go to that second line and drop that new one on. So that's plane dot one. Maybe let's call it plane two and call this one plane one so we can keep it straight. And they're both gonna basically be doing the same thing. But what I could do to make it similar but offset this second set a bit is adjust those keyframes. So maybe this comes on a little later. And then I can go to my plane effector and jump in parameters and just change my parameters a bit. So maybe they rotate from the other direction and don't come in from that direction of X, but come in from the other side. You can see we're going to get slightly different animation, but the timing will be the same. So you can do a lot with animating in text using effectors under MoGraph effector. And there's a lot more. I can do a lot more of them in some other videos. And that pretty much covers how we do the letter by letter MoGraph animation. Now, if you want to get an idea of how I did that second part, if I jump into After Effects, where everything is linked together with these lens flares after we bring it in through Cineware, I set up a separate tutorial for linking Cinema 4D text and scenes with After Effects 
using Cineware and then linking it to Video Copilot's optical flares. So check that one out if you want to really get an idea of that second part. And if you want to see how to do this in Cinema 4D Lite or check out some of the camera tutorials I have on Cinema 4D, be sure to click any of those thumbnails to keep learning and kind of continue on this idea with different topics on Cinema 4D, After Effects, 3D animation, and all that fun stuff. And if you want to help support the show and you're interested in digging into these project files and taking a look at how the stuff is made, be sure to check out motiontutorials.net and go to support the show where you can either throw in a couple bucks directly on motiontutorials.net or you can head on to patreon.com slash seanfrangella where you can become a weekly patron of the site. You can see I'm up to a massive $16 a tutorial so far and you can get sets of project files and even all the project files if you want to jump up to that level and help support the show help me set aside the time to keep doing these weekly and twice a week tutorials and get all sorts of bonus content and be sure to check out motiontutorials.net to check out fully organized and sortable tutorials i've put together say you want to just look for optical flares you can just type that in and very quickly sort through all of my tutorials a little easier than it is to dig through endless pages on YouTube. And as always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Be sure to check out some of those other thumbnails that are popping up again right now if you want to keep learning on all these sorts of topics. I'm Sean Frangella again from motiontutorials.net. If you didn't get that enough from the whole tutorial, having my name and 3D text in it. As always, thanks for watching. I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.